The Bionic Bat, a human powered airplane. Okay, Miguel, can you pick up the airplane? And Roy, if you get down to the tail boom, and watch out for the wingtips. We, we can carry it out of this hangar because the whole plane only weighs 70 pounds. How's it look over there? How do you design a plane that will fly, but is light enough to be powered by one person? Okay, I think the wind looks really good now. That's the problem Martin Cowley and his friends are working on. They built the bionic bat out of plastic materials that are very lightweight, but are still very strong. The bat doesn't have an engine. To keep it flying, you pedal it, just like a bicycle. They're going for a new world record for a human-powered plane. The important thing for a successful attempt is to fly when there's almost no wind, because that means that the aeroplane can maintain a ground speed of about 27 miles an hour all the way around the course. And what happens is, when the aeroplane's flying into wind, it is slowed down, so its ground speed into wind is reduced. For every mile an hour of wind speed, it takes us about another two or three seconds to fly around the course. And as we're really very close to setting a record, those last couple of seconds can be very important. I know you're interested in the weight of the bionic bat, Miguel. Perhaps I could ask you how much do you weigh? 140 pounds. Okay, well this whole aeroplane here, which is 55 feet wingspan, only weighs 70 pounds. How is, how is that possible? The reason we were able to make an aeroplane this large that weighed such a small amount was with the use of lightweight engineering plastics. Almost all the materials you see in this aeroplane are man-made plastics. For example, this black tube that you see here, which is the main wing spar to the aeroplane, is made from carbon fiber. And all of these white wing ribs that you see, these are made from expanded polystyrene foam. Polystyrene, like those plastic cups? That's that... exactly right. Just like those plastic coffee cups, very lightweight. What, what about this, this skin? It looks like plastic food covering. Plastic. It's very similar to the sort of thing you might wrap sandwiches in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this particular material here, it's half a thousandth of an inch thick, and it's called mylar. It's a plastic film. We lay it over the wings, and then in order to get it really smooth and flat like this, we blow hot air onto it, and that makes the plastic shrink drum tight. And that yeah. gives the wing a really smooth profile and means it goes through the air very cleanly. It flies at 27 miles an hour, which may not sound very fast by normal airplane standards, but for a human-powered airplane, it's extremely fast. So it's just like a model airplane? Very similar, yes. It's just like a giant model airplane, big enough for a human to fly in. This is how we started to build the bionic bat. It's a model that represents the framework of the fuselage. This is where the pilot sits, right in here. This is the wheel. This would be the wing spar, and here's the fuselage. And by building a model like this and twisting on it, it helps you see the different loads in each part. Also, what you're basically doing is finding out the strengths and weaknesses that the of the plane itself. That's right. Once we've learned what we need to know, we go out there and build the parts. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Lift up, 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 up! The headwind was too strong. No new record on the first attempt. How well did the plane fly, did you think? Was it set up right? If it would have asked any more power out of me, it would have been too much. The legs are all wobbly. You want to see me fall down? <laughs> Well, it's a good attempt, anyway. Uh, unfortunately, well, you, you must have had like three, three or four miles an hour headwind, that, no, which is right that's probably the equivalent four. of about a eight-second penalty or something. Yeah. Just, just purely from the wind. That's without turbulence. So, if we would have done that in smooth air, we would have had it by yeah. half a second. Yeah. Okay, I'm really disappointed you guys didn't stop the wind for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting the plane ready for another try as soon as the wind changes. 
The plastic materials you see in this aeroplane are relatively new. A lot of them have only been available for, let's say, 10 or 20 years. So really, uh, it's only the technology of these new plastic materials that have enabled us to make human-powered aeroplanes fly successfully pretty much for the first time in aviation history. The aeroplane is made from carbon fiber tubes, just like this one, that have a very thin wall. How do you make this? Well, we'd start off with an aluminum tube like this, and then we take these carbon fibers, which already have adhesive in them, and we would wrap them around the tube in a spiral. And you'd go down the whole length of the tube, and when the tube is wrapped, then you start peeling off the paper. Oh, wow. Well. And that just leaves the pure carbon fiber behind. Oh. So now we have our first layer of carbon fiber on the tube, and after that, we would add more layers, depending how strong we want the tube to be. Well, what about the aluminum tube? Isn't that pretty heavy? Yes. Well, the next stage is you bake the carbon fiber, which is quite soft at the moment, and we bake it in an oven for an hour. That makes the carbon fiber very strong. And afterwards, you can pull the aluminum tube out, and you're left with just a pure carbon fiber tube. Carbon fiber is extremely strong. For example, carbon fiber is about one-fifth of the weight of steel for the same strength. In other words, if you wanted to make the same part out of steel, you'd have to use five times the weight of steel to do the same job this carbon fiber tube is doing. The only way to make this part stronger is to add more material. And if the part is already strong enough, then the extra material is just added weight that we don't want on the airplane. So how does that feel? I can imagine it getting real tiring after a while. It's a bit like riding a bicycle uphill. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can turn this off for a second. <laughs> and how are we doing on the time, Sam? Good, you have uh, eight minutes coming up. How did you get into human powered flight? Well, I've always been interested in building and flying model aeroplanes, and in many respects, Human-powered aeroplanes are nearer to being large model aeroplanes than being small, full-size aircraft. And Brian, you have four minutes. The real challenge with a project like the Bionic Bat is to design and invent each little part on the aeroplane. Step by step, piece by piece, we figure out all the problems. By the end of the day, we've usually come up with a solution. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five... Four, three, two, one, start. The bionic bat is trying to fly a one-mile course in less time than any human-powered plane has flown it before. The current world's record is 2 minutes, 32 seconds. Go on, Brian! They beat the old record by nine seconds. We've got the official watch here. What a great flight. Good, good job. Yeah, good job. Yeah, you got the record. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
comfortably without wearing yourself out is a lot better than trying sure. four. Four will be adequate if you really go all out during the fight. Parker, right, what's it say? About five amps. Go down to the marker. What if you stop pedaling? Um, the amps would climb up probably to about 20.
shadow with yeah. splashes of sunlight in there. And, 